Hello and welcome back to a new video in my C++ tutorial series. In the last video we have uh, extended our linked list to an iterator so that we can use some nice things like these yeah, range-based for loops. Today we're gonna actually take all the knowledge that we have yeah, like written in uh, C++ and we're gonna convert it to an example that you already know from C, the INI parser. So we're gonna rewrite our INI parser into a new library called INIPP which is our INI++, which stands for C++. And the idea is that we're going to convert it and that you can also see how we would do this in C++. Let me start by creating a new empty project. The name is going to be 09, INI PP for INI++, C++. Hit create, project is created. Go to all files view, go to the project's properties, make sure all configurations or platforms are on. We're gonna go to CPP20. We're gonna call this one INIPP because that's the name. We're gonna keep this on application until we are done. And as soon as we are done, we're gonna convert this into a um, into a library that we're then gonna consume. This is something that you, can, that you can do if you wanna get started writing your library. You can write all code inside of one application, test it, everything, and then move the library to be a library and uh, yeah, the, um, move the application out of it. Let me quickly copy the configurations that we like to keep. And it's definitely time that we kind of like automate this stuff here at some point. But yeah, for now, that's actually good. Let's create all of these and our project should be ready. Let's create a main file because this needs a main file if we want to start with an application here. So we're going to do our main.cpp as we always do. We're going to include iostream because we do that iostream here and int main and i'm just gonna do a default scdc out of hello world uh, world here and that everything works let's actually select this as the startup project press a five and see if we have done everything correct and there we go hello world everything works so all good now let's get started and create our library. Uh, we're going to do this by creating a header here and I'm going to call this inipp.hpp. And there we are. It's looking a bit ugly, the name, but it's okay. So since this is a uh, library, we're going to create a namespace. It's going to be called inipp and instead of this namespace, all the magic is going to happen. All right, just to uh, revisit how we actually parsed INI files. Well, we parsed INI files. Um, actually, let's uh, take a look on how they how it looked like. Let's take a look at this default INI or this config.ini and see how an INI was built up. So an INI was built out of comments that started with a semicolon. We had keys or set not keys, we had sections. These are like the sections and then we had like a key and value paired to assign these. We had the uh, quotation marks for strings, which we could also not print as it looks like. Yeah, we can also have them normally. Uh, just a quick revisitor also for myself because I tend to not remember stuff like that because I can look it up, right? It's already <laughs> hard enough to remember all the programming stuff that you need. Okay, so uh, this is like the INI file that we look at and actually let me grab this one and quickly copy this over so that we have it there as well. This is now a hard copy as you can see, or is it a hard copy? Yeah, it is a hard copy, that's good. I wanted to make sure that that is. Um, yeah, a bit bad to have two of them, but in our case, it's totally fine. And let's now get started by uh, yeah, writing some code for that. So first of all, I want to handle the uh, parsing of INI files. So what we're going to write is we're going to write a parser, a class called parser, and this parser class is going to be responsible for parsing INIs. Now, um, the INI parser is going to have some private and public data. This is kind of like the working data that we have. And what I want to do is um, I want to add a function that parses some section of a file. And the idea is in general that you can feed multiple files into the parser if you desire so. So the idea is that you have a void function and this one is going to call add string and this is going to add a string that shall be parsed to use strings we're going to include string and we're going to include string view and if we want to add something we have an std uh, or a const std string underscore view reference um, st str just for string um, the source code of that is going to get into its own file we do want to do the uh, agent uh, cpp uh, HTTP and CPP to make this a bit more easier. So that's the idea here. So add string um, is to add a string here. And I also want to be able to parse files. So 
add file and if we want to do a file we actually have some nice feature of the standard library there's something called file system file system is a header that uh, contains information about the file system and the file system object is kind of like a special thing so std uh, file system is the namespace here it's actually in the sub namespace and there is a class called path and this path is actually the path a file path that can represent a file path the interesting thing on the file path is that actually if you would try add file we're going to see this in the main in a second let's actually do this here so that you can see what i mean so hashtag include ini hpp if i would do something like ini pp parser parser if i would create one and say like add file you can actually see that i can write a normal string the interesting thing is on windows uh, strings or file passes actually so-called white strings and white strings are indicated by this l before the string this big capitalized l and if you see if i change this to an l it still works because actually a path can be like any type of string imaginable this would be for example a unicode string i think you can actually say like u32 or i think this is like smaller uh, small case uh, double, uh, small case u is like 60 uh, bits uh, unicode string this is like a 32 bit unicode string this is a 60 bit wide string this is a normal 8 bit ANSI string or cpp c standard string there's like a hell of a lot of string madness going on in c c plus plus which deserves an old video but the general idea is um, the std file system path can handle all of them the path could be in any string format imaginable and it's always converted into the right version that the operating system uses and that's a nice thing if you have like a wide string path you can actually define one wide strings are just can represent more characters like the special German stuff or Frenchy apostrophe things. But in our case, we're just gonna say in our location, we're gonna have a config.ini, config.ini, which we need to double check that actually our debugging directory is gonna be our project directory, which it is, so the working directory, project directory, so that we can access it. But the idea here is to just provide a normal file and the syntax behind the scenes is a bit different. But that's not really the matter here. All right, so now let's actually uh, implement these functions. Let's start with the add file one because this one is going to be uh, interesting and you're going to learn something new because what you're now going to learn is another new thing today. You're going to learn the F stream. F stream. Now you already know IOStream. We used IOStream to print to the console and now we're going to use F stream to. Um, yeah, actually read and write to a file. So fstream means reading, writing to a file. So how can you create an fstream? So you do an FD, std uh, fstream here. Actually, there is a ifstream, and ifstream is input file stream. And people tend to just call them in for import or file in. I'm going to call them file. I call it file in. And as you can see, I can actually supply the path in here directly as this is a city file system path object to basically yeah, be able to uh, input the path here. There are actually more arguments. You actually need to specify some modes, how you want to open the file. Um, the modes are stored in this SCD IOS uh, namespace. What we want to do is uh, we want to actually call whole load this file binary. Um, binary may not make any sense because you think hey this is a normal uh, like text-based file however if you want to get the line endings and all the things that we need for parsing if you want to have like the raw data of the file like we had it in c you need to open this in binary and you do this by passing this std ios binary now this binary is actually a value a uh, integer value and what you can do is you can actually or this together not with a double or with a normal or with some other values and what we want to end to that since we are specifying this is we want to uh, um or to that std ios in or means um, that they are like combined the two values are combined these are flag values you can combine them with or basically this has one bit set this has another bit set log uh, bitwise or means that both bits are set in the resulting value this just tells that we want to open the file so it's used for reading into the um, structure here so this is why we have this in we were reading into our application from file system into our application and we want to have a binary file to read everything that we got.
All right, so now the next thing that we need to do is we need to check if the file is open. We have this function is open, so it's open, we're going to do something. Or what I rather do is I rather do if not open, and what I want to throw is I want to throw an exception. How can we throw an exception? We need the exception, of course, std um, accept. And what I want to quickly do is I want to actually write my own exception class, just that we uh, can differentiate between exceptions of the standard library and our exceptions, and I want to write a class ini, or actually just exception, exception here, just a class exception. This is going to be a uh, public uh, std uh, runtime error, because it's an error um, that was uh, executed at runtime, and we're going to say public to add a constructor here, and I'm just going to say using std runtime error, runtime error, like that. I think it's just in, just to do it like that, and this should now allow us to use the default constructor of the runtime error, which should just alias this type as an std runtime error, but it's not really an alias, it's an actual class building on top of that, which means that our... Um, Exception here is actually a bit, it's, it's a dedicated class and you can actually just catch exceptions from our library instead of catching it globally, which is something that you might want to do. So what I want to do is I want to throw a exception and I'm just going to provide some text here and say uh, can't open file. Now can't open file is rather a bad exception text because we do not get any information about what file we can't open. This is why I want to include format. Format is a uh, special feature in CPP20 that allows you to format strings, similar to like what printf has done. Um, the only difference between std format and like std like printf or something like that is that the format string is a way more flexible format string. Actually, uh, normally you would like provide like a percentage s in printf, what we have done in C. However, we don't need this here. If I would want to do something here, I can actually use these uh, uh, double curly brackets and these double curly brackets are now actually specifying the placeholder. The type is no longer required. The type is deduced automatically, so I can enter a part and it should be deduced automatically. Um, actually, if I would try to compile this it's going to probably give us an error yeah it's giving us a hell of a lot of errors and um, actually these errors are rather hard to debug but long story short a path is a std file system path which is not printable at least not printable in a format it's printable on an std outstream but it's not printable here uh, what you need to do is you need to call the string function if you call the string function it's converted to a string and then the format can actually handle this these errors are always bad to look at if we change them everything goes away understanding them would mean to completely understand how std format works but just to be aware if you use std format and these placeholders bad things can happen if you are not providing correct types here i don't know why path is actually not printable it should be i think in format strings, it should be automatically formatted because normally uh, pass automatically append like the quotation marks to them if you print them, but we need to do this manually because we need to convert this to a string. So that's very, but that's how it is. Now the next thing that we have done in C is we have seeked to the end. Actually the same thing works here as well. You can actually call a function called seek g to seek to something and you wanna um, seek to a stream pause and I am actually not completely sure how it was. I think it was something like SCD IOS end, I think. End is like where you want to seek. However, um, the seek function is doing some more advanced things. So actually, let me quickly look this up because this one can screw you up uh, on an if stream, seek G of an if stream. And please, the proper one here, this is the proper documentation. Uh, you have the position and the, um, yeah, if you want to have the position, offset and position, let's see what is version 1. Let's take a look at these. Do we have some information here for the 1? Okay, if, it's to be absolute, what is it doing? That's a bad documentation. Let's take a look at the example. Seek G0 is rewinding the file to the begin. So this would probably mean that we can also, uh, let's see. 
Okay, so if we want to have an absolute position and we want to definitely go to the end, you want to do something like offset zero and direction to SCD IOS end. If you're doing this like that, it says zero from end. It's a bit different than C. This is why I needed to like look at this. But if you do this like that, everything works. And now what we actually want to do is we want to uh, read this all in into an SCD string. I'm going to call this one file data. And I do want to write into that string. So um, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say uh, tell G, which is going to give me the length of the string. Now, uh, file data needs to be uh, uh, resized, I think. Uh, there's two functions, reserve and resize. Um, this is, uh, I think we want to actually call the resize function because this allows us to provide a fill character. The fill characters be by default the null terminator. We can specify this again here as well. And the new size shall be the old size plus one, tell g plus one, but tell g is a stream pos, which is something that is, I think, relative. So actually, you need to do something like minus std ios back for ios begin. And if you do mass with them, you should end up with the right one. No, you don't. Interesting. How, you, how can you convert this into like a size t? Is it just a way of doing it like that? Yeah, it is just a way of doing this like that. So just a normal C style cast to a size T, which should convert this to a proper distance. We are adding one for the zero terminator, and then we're gonna add, uh, fill all of that that we're gonna resize. We're gonna fill all of them with null chars so that everything is good. Now we need to rewind the file. So we need to seek G uh, Zeek G again, again now to zero, but now we are not going to the end. We're actually going to go to the begin, which is SCD IOS begin, or back to be short, which is putting the file back at the beginning. And this basically gives us a string. The string file data is now as long as the file plus one for the zero terminator. Now the only thing that is left is actually to read. Um, you can do this by calling a function on the file in. You can actually uh, call the read function. Um, it's going to take a char pointer where it's reading to. We run a read to file data dot uh, data, which gives us access to the data array. And we want to actually uh, seek the file size, which we haven't stored now, actually. So let's now actually store this here. Let's say size t file size and save this somewhere there. I think if we do it as like that, can it be automatically converted? I think if it do if we do this like that, it can be. Now, if we do this like that, actually, I want to have that one like that. So I'm going to first go back to the end and I'm going to resize the string. And then again, I'm going to write the file size, which should give us, uh, which should keep us uh, with uh, everything that's inside of the file now, inside of that string. Now, the only thing left to do is to actually uh, now call the, the this function. Actually, what I do want to do, now these are going to be void functions, right? If they succeed, they don't need to return anything. So let's actually now call the add string function for the file data. And then everything should be added here. So we have like, yeah, like four parts. We are opening the file. We are finding out how big the file is. Uh, this one is then should then be here. We find out how big the file is. We are going to create a string, resize it so that all of the file content has space in it. We are reading from that file into that string, and then we're going to call the add string function, which is then process it like if we would have a normal string in our application, which is later on going to do some code here. And yeah, let's now actually see what this code does. We already have the add file in here. We don't need to do any SDC out. Let's put uh, press F11 to start debugging with a breakpoint and then see what we can do. All right, there we are. Let's see, now the parser has been created. Let's jump inside of the function and see what we are doing. Uh, file is open, that's good. We are seeking to the end. We are getting the file size, which is 315. We are seeking to the begin. We are creating the file data. We are resizing it and now we are reading it and it has failed. This is sometimes something that can happen. Interestingly enough, it does happen. Why does it happen here? Um, what is the problem? Why is it? That's not looking how it should actually. I don't know what happened here. Let me quickly find out what went wrong here. It might be that we need to read at 
that we need to read like that. There is sometimes a bit of a madness resolved with the string, but I'm not quite sure if that solves the issue. But we are here in a like seminar way to find out what I have done wrong. I would assume that this works and it doesn't work. So why did it not work? In general, this shouldn't be an issue. We have resized it, which should actually have given us some some memory to work it. I'm not always a bit, I'm not always sure if resize is actually doing what I want, but we can vertify this by taking a look at the file data and we can actually see that the capacity is 15, which means that we haven't used it. So we want to actually use the resize function. We want to use the reserve function to reserve some memory on that. And if we reserve something, we do not fill it, but what we need to do is we need to do this like that. If I do this like that, then I'm probably resized. They are always a bit controversial, these functions. At some point, you need to take a look at them or you need to know what you're doing. Like I, I can do this here because I know on what to look at. Now you can see that we have a proper capacity, which means if I would continue on, it would have actually read this, but we should have one issue. Um, interesting. Uh, did it already zero this out? Um, I'm not quite sure how it has done that, uh, but it seems like that reserving the size has already zeroed out the last null terminator. The thing is like in a string, you remember this from the C example. If you don't, I'm gonna show this to you, inipasa.c. When I have read the file, we set the last um, char to the null terminator. I haven't done this here yet because um, I think what reserve, reserve is doing, it is zeroing that out. The question is, is it only doing that on Microsoft? Or is it like a C standard? If this is a C standard, the code is fine. If it's not, no, this is the wrong documentation. I don't like that one. I do want to have the proper one. Um, reserve uh, new capacity. Okay, so let's see what it's doing. Informs a uh, object as a uh, soldier. If new cap is greater than new storage is allocated and capacity is made equal or greater than new cap. The question is, I invalidated, uh, complexity throws, is it really zeroing that? I don't see anything that it's zeroing that. There is no information if it is really zeroing it. So it might not be zeroed. It might be zeroed, it might not be zeroed. So what we need to do is we need to say that file uh, data at file size is equal to a uh, to the null terminator. This is something that we need to do here to be sure because the standard is not specifying that. In our case, it shouldn't be any difference or it should not make a difference, I think. Um, we'll take a look at the file data here. It goes IP address in CA dot 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 dot. Um, is that actually the whole INI? Okay. That's interesting. Why is that not working? Because we have read into that string. Do we modify this after reading? Um, file size 350. And capacity 390. Uh, sometimes it is not doing the things that you want. Interestingly enough, I, normally this should work, but the problem is that it already has a null terminator somewhere. Okay, so let me do a quick Google search here. Uh, SCD uh, if stream to string. Can we read to a string? Read whole ASCII file. Those stack overflow is your friend. Um, TLG buffer. So you can, okay, so you can do it like that. That's interesting. So it seems like this is actually okay. Now what they have done, like they have done this a bit differently. What they have done it, they have not reserved this on the string. This is also a possibility to do. Um, they have like directly created the string like that with like a default character and uh, a size. File size plus one. I think they already added, they also added plus one there. No, they did not. And they did it the other way around size. And then that's interesting because normally is size already reserving that? Hmm, interesting. 
but it seems like that this might actually be okay so that it's all allocating one more but i am personally just a guy who likes to have some extra memory available this is probably wrong because like the, it's not always allocating exactly what you want it's most of the time putting this up to a higher number of value that is being used um yeah so i think this should be good like let's see if it's if it's doing its thing I mean, I did this already previously, but I always need to want to verify that it is working. Now, again, it's doing some stuff here, and yeah. Oh, now it's actually looking better than what we had previously. That's uh, nice. But now this is exactly how we want it. Interesting that if we do it that way around, it works. Okay, so I think what happened now is that it has filled that. Yeah, okay. I know what's the problem. Previously, we just reserved the size, and if you're just reserving a size, it means that it's in undefined memory, and it seems like we can't access that because the, the null terminator is not done properly however if you're doing this like that and constructing this with some default character and some size it is allocated previously and know why it's not doing this the other way around why it's not providing me a way to initialize this with some some default character maybe the uh the resize function would be actually correct if we would haven't entered the null terminator in there but that's not something that i'm aware of so everything else should be read it cor read correctly and so I don't care. This now works, and this is exactly what I want. It's reading the data. And actually, I think that this one is now actually wrong because now it's taking this number of characters and adds the null terminator by its own. So we can remove this actually uh, of the awareness that I have. And then we, I think we should have one less uh, space here, which is a space that we didn't have in the actual file, I think. Let's see. Did we have a space here? We had a top. Interesting. So. Is it discarding the last character? What happens if I add a D here? Is it reading that or is it not? It's reading it, so everything is good. So it might just uh, have some not properly parsed that one in the actual file. And I don't like to have tops in here. It's just a new line here like that. Okay. Right, so now we can read a file here in C++. And this took way too long, but yeah. I'm going to take you always on a ride. I'm not personally too used to these functions. I normally use like the win API functions uh, because I'm doing a hell of a lot of Windows programming and I do tend to just use Windows asynchronous uh, file IO, which basically means that you don't need to wait until the data is read. In our case, we call the read function. As soon as uh, reading is finished, it returns. On Windows, you can do something like asynchronous IO, which means that you can do some other work while the file has been read, but that's a different story and whole more advanced and it allows you to write separate code for Windows Linux while this one works on all operating systems. We could try and force our exception that we had here, but I don't think that we need to. I think it's fine. All right, so now let's actually uh, implement the add string function. Now the add string function is again going to be a state machine. We're going to do the same state machine that we had previously, but um, it's going to be done a bit differently. We're going to have a private function here that's going to be uh, a void process char. And this one is going to get a char uh, C, which is then going to be actually processed down in the state machine. Now, inside the add string function, what I'm basically going to do for char C in a string. I don't know. Can I do this? I probably should be able to do this because it's a string view. Yeah, I can do this. I've never tried this, actually. Um, and I'm basically just going to process each character through the uh, state machine. Very simple. Now, the state machine itself... Um, it's going to be um, very similar to what we had in uh, in C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a big uh, switch state, M state actually. The state is currently not in existence. However, what we're going to do is we're going to nicely label our states. How are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to write an enum, private. And normally from C, you already know the enum. In this case, I would call this one state. I don't know if I have I have I done enums in C++ yet. I'm not quite sure. Uh, however, on C++, they are always called enum class. Enum class makes them C++ compatible, while a normal enum is a C-style enum, which makes everything exposed. If I would like something like lel in here, uh, lel would be globally available. While um, making this a class uh, adds all the hierarchy features of uh, C++ to it. So you would always want to use uh, enum class in C++ and not the enum itself. Except if you really want to have an enum out of some reasons where it's actually fine but if you're done doing it you always would 
do something like INIPP underscore parser underscore state state one, something like that, because then it's globally available if it's an enum. And um, this would basically just make this deducible. But since we're on C++, enum class is our friend, which allows us to have meaningful names, actually. Now, uh, of course, we need an instance of that M state. Let's have a state M state. And since this is all nicely nested together, everything is good. Now, what states did we have in the C version of it? I am just gonna steal this one i'm 100 sure of that uh or it's also inside of that uber function okay log file working buffer okay so that's all of our states so let's copy this comment over and transform them into our enum so that we have some data in here uh ready for data is gonna be one ready for data comment um, section name, I'm not going to add the starter, starts just section name, key value. We had a key finished? Uh, okay, I need to, okay, okay, I need to overthink this again. Okay, ready for data is very simple. We have parsed the complete line and we are ready. Now, comment started is also very similar, which is in our case just called comment because we are doing a comment. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna call this one section now and not just section name. Then, um, okay, so we have the key value. Okay, okay, so I'm just gonna call this one KV key for key and value key. And then we have key and value data. So that's the idea. So KV key and KV data. That's simple because if we are starting with the first character, we are ready for key and value key. And if we had to have the equal sign, uh, we are kind of like in KV data. However, um, the the key started and the key uh, finished is something, yeah, we're gonna add something called KV equal. KV equal equal is gonna be the state in uh, which we process the equal sign, but not had the first character of the data. So maybe let's uh, formulate some information about that. Um, internal state flushed, flushed and ready for data, for any INI data, comment started, X, uh, comment started so that we started a comment, section is being defined then we're going to have something called kv key which uh, the information that we're going to have here is uh, key value equal equal sign of kv value reached and we have like kv data coming and we always had like I think the invalid state like one two three four five six and then we have like seven for that one yeah oh no we have eight ones here uh comment section name key started finish ready for value key finished why do we have because key finished is when you have a space I think and then we wait for the equal sign but that can be done differently we don't need that state space actually um ready for value this is like equal value started and then we have like invalid data um invalid token um invalid the question is if we have an invalid token do we want to now abort parsing now and see this was a bit harder because we didn't add like exceptions and stuff but i think we could just get away with uh, if we have something invalid we would rather i think uh Abort there, right? Or do we want to make this verbose? No, if we have some invalid I and I, I do want to break. That's that's what I'm going to say here. Right, so this gives us now a nice little state values for our state machine. We, of course, want to give this an initial values. So our state and ready for data is the initial state of our state machine. Now, the only thing left to do is we need to switch on that. So, case uh, state ready for data is something that we have. I don't know if we need them yet. I'm just gonna provide our default case break, break signature here again. 
and then we have like a hell of a lot of uh, information available here ready for data we have like the comment that we can do um, section kv key kv equal and kv data actually KV value would be the proper name for that. We don't need a C style now um, because it's a key and value since for key and value. So if we have key and we should also have a value in here. All right. So this now gives us our very basic state machine that we can now implement. Now, um, in general, um, what we need to do is we need to have a bit of storage for these ones. We're actually going to have a std uh, string m current uh, key and m current value. These are like the storage names and also we have the section, the current section name. So m current section is going to be that one here. Uh, right. Now, um, this is actually everything that we need, I think, and we should now be able to yeah, implement this one, I think. Now, one thing that I want to do, yeah, yeah, we're going to see. Um, I do want to first implement comments because these ones are simple. Or actually, in general, I think we had something that we want to do with control characters. Did we want to replace control characters or not? I don't think that we wanted to replace or remove them but one thing that I do want to do is I want to quickly abort on every control character which is not a new line or a top mm, yeah we could do a quick uh, switch and see what we can do we can kind of like do it like this is a normal char uh, parse a normal char parsing and what I do want to do is I want to catch control keys now, um, if uh, is, um, I think this is the thing, is cntrl, this is a c function that is also, should be also available in some std uh, stuff, but I think, let's quickly find this out, if it is in the C++ standard, um, dum, 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 is std, there it is, std is cntrl, uh, is a control character is classified by the current install C local the default C local whatever CC type is the header so let's include CC type here and then we should have this STD and then we could put in the control character and if it is one we do want to do a quick little check switch on the char and in case we are getting something that's like a new line, we want to do something. Actually, what I want to do is I want to add that one underscore underscore fall through. This is a nice little macro that allows uh, this function to fall through. Uh, this actually expands to, yeah, okay, this is different in the standard. Fall through, you want to actually write this like that. This is kind of like telling the compiler that you actually intentionally not write a break and it's actually allowed to fall through to that. I do have a tabulator. If we have a tabulator, I want to replace. Uh, I just want to fall through to to end to a new line. And if we are doing this like that, I want to break out of that. And by default, uh, what I want to do is I want to return. Now this looks quite interesting what I have written here, but this is not actually a state machine that's catching control characters. Now a tabulator and a new line are the only allowed control characters. Tabulator because we just want to pass them on and new line because we need them to recognize something. And if we do this, we break out of the switch and continue on. If we have any other control character, we return. And that's the whole idea here of that. We could, yeah, well, I think that's okay to have it like that. This might be cheaper to just do a normal switch. No, because then this default one wouldn't work. No, it's, it's, it's okay like that. It's completely okay. All right, so now that we have catched all data that we don't want, we can implement our ready for data um, function here. So what I want to quickly do is I want to switch on the character here. And I'm going to have multiple cases that we can have. We can have a semicolon, which stands for a comment, which basically means that our uh, state is going to traverse to equal to state comment. Now we are processing a comment and we break. We have another way of doing it. What can we also have if we are ready for data? We could have an opening bracket, which means that we are defining a... Um, 
that we are defining a uh, section name. So state section is the one that we are looking for. Then we're going to break out of it. Uh, or what we can also have is we can have a, a space or a uh, tabulator backslash t. These are the only two ones that are valid. Backslash tabulator or new line. Actually, these are all are valid things. Uh, and I also want to add this like fall through attribution so that the compiler don't give us a warning that we have forgot a break. And what this is in general basically saying us is that we are, in case we have some space or we have some tabulator or some backslash n, uh, it is just ignoring them. So spaces are ignored, tabs are ignored, backslash n's are, uh, are ignored. And the only thing that we're going to then take a look at this, oh, I didn't want it to compile even through, it shouldn't do anything totally wrong. The only thing that I want to do is like a default one. Default one means um, that we have uh, anything that is not one of these lists, which is a key value uh, key, which means that we actually need to store this. So actually inside of M, uh, current uh, section or the current no that's the current key that we want to set first of all i want to uh, clear that one because now i want to start a new one and this is now going to be plus equal to the character i think we can plus equal characters to std strings yes we can we can append them with plus equal to a string and this is just clearing them so everything that was stored in here previously is now cleared because we are now starting a new key and we're going to get into that which is exactly what we want only thing left to do is to set the state now to state uh kv key that is now coming and to break out of that even through now this break wouldn't be totally necessary but you can see what's going on here it is traversing and as you can see it's already way cleaner than we have had this in c it's probably going to generate the same code but it's way cleaner with like this m state you can no i don't want to check for that um you can directly see what's going on it's like the common state and it's all nicely labeled now um the only thing left to do is now to go to all of these. Now on comments, it's really simple. We're just going to check if C equals um, a new line, because that's the only way how you can get out of a comment. And if this is the case, I'm going to say that it's equal to state uh, ready for data. We are ready to start over again. I'm intentionally not putting in the brackets in here because we already have a hell of a lot of hierarchy. However, no, let's add this one here. Let's be 100% clean and add this one. All right, now just one thing, you can collapse this if then as well. Now what happens if we are doing a section? Well, many things can happen. Um, okay, this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, how, how are we gonna do this? Uh, I thought that I said that we're gonna break if something is invalid, yet yeah, it makes things a hell of a lot of easier. We have multiple uh, things can happen. So two valid things can happen, or actually two things can happen. One is valid, one is not. If we have a closing bracket, it's valid. It means that it's the end of the uh, section name, which means that we're just gonna put the state back to the state um, state uh, ready for data. Now we are back again ready for data. If we are ended with the section, well, actually, yeah, we would be kind of like at an end of section state and then we would need to parse this because this would now allow us to directly continue with key value data which might actually be valid if i'm thinking about that but i know yeah maybe we have a bit more extended ini parsing than the ini standard so is actually putting onto us this is something that can happen there's another thing that can happen which is a new line this is something that should not happen in a uh in a um in a section name because this means that the bracket was not closed which is going to give us an exception actually what i do want to also check is for tabulators tabulators are not valid in names and these ones are also not valid which we want to add with a fall through attribution i don't know why it suggests not they're suggesting this like that uh and if in case that is coming i'm basically going to say something like uh yeah just going to say the text um uh new new lines or tabs are not allowed in section names so one error message that's going to tell what really happened there we're going to have a default uh, pass here the default pass is actually a normal character that we can add to the section so current section plus equals c so we're going to append the character and everything is good all right so now let's take a look at the kv key as soon as we have a kv key everything is uh, valid until we have a space Ah, I told you that we can... Yeah, maybe we still need one more state. Maybe we're gonna have a KV key and a KV key done. Um, yeah, I wanna have a KV key done there as well, actually.
uh, because this makes our life a bit easier. So we're going to have to stay here. It, it had a reason why I've written this in C, right? Okay. <laughs> so what can happen if we have a KV key? We can have a space. If we have a space, we're going to say that my state is equal uh, state um, KV key done. We're going to break here. I think that I hopefully had all the breaks that I wanted in here. Yeah, like in theory, there should be a break. If you're returning or throwing, the break is not necessary, but on the end, it's also not necessary, but I like to have them everywhere in there to be 100% safe. So if we have a space, it means that the KV key is done. In the KV key, we are also not aligned to have like tabs and we are not allowed to have uh, new lines in here. That's something that's not valid. We're just gonna throw something exception i do this is in theory the same that we had here but different so let's copy that one and not allowed in the key and the key it's not allowed to have them in the key come on fall through and i always tend to just add these like that and i should would I recommend you as well. So space means KV key done, tab or new line is not allowed. Any other character means it's valid and it needs to be appended. So default state is that the M. So default one is M uh, current key plus equal the character. And then we're gonna break and continue out of there. KVD done is an exception and we are, actually if we are on an exception that we are kind of like trapped. If we have an exception, uh, yeah, there's the kind of like the state is not cleared of the, um, of the state machine, that's something that needs to be considered actually. Actually, if we have an exception, we need to reset the state as well. We need to, actually what we need to do is we actually need to store that the, the state machine is faulty. Uh, which we could also do by completely resetting it, right? We should do a complete reset if we have an exception. If you have an exception, we should do a full state machine reset. That's something that I haven't considered yet. Let's write a reset because this is now a class and it's stateful. We are not uh, having these values temporary. So we should have a reset function. What this reset function shall do uh, is it should clear everything. So it should clear the section, the key, and also the current value. And this is something that also should set the state equal to uh, state, uh, ready for data and instead of resetting on exception i am actually gonna reset before we're gonna process our string this is gonna make sure that every string that comes in is processed freshly and if we had an exception call this one later it's also assuming that everything is good which doesn't mean uh, which means that we don't need to change this one down here which is good all right everything else should be good if we have a kv key that's okay kv key now we do need a kv key done uh state kv key done um, and instead of KV key done, we're going to do another switch on the character. And we're going to have multiple cases. If the KV key is done, a space is like the only thing valid that can happen. And does really nothing. Um, if we have a tuck, the tab can also do nothing, right? A tab is okay here and the space is okay, which means if we need to attribute this with fall through here and then everything is good now what is going to be bad is going to be a new line if a new line is going to be here then we haven't provided a, a value um every key needs to have a value that's the say something that's important an exception that can happen here and in case we do have anything else so the default state the default state means no it's not the default one it's not good actually what's good is the only thing that's good is the equal sign which is going to bring us into uh, m state equals uh, state kv equal now we are on the equal sign uh, and everything else like any other character is actually bad because uh, first uh, after a key value first we need to uh, have the equal sign before we can get this like a, a key cannot have a space in it um, keys are not allowed to have spaces in them i'm not quite sure if this is actually too specification but it's just something that i 
tend to have put it on that and then we have the same behavior that we had previously. Now KV equal is going to be also simple here. We're going to have a switch on C here. We're going to have a case space and the case uh, tabulator, which is every, which is all good. They are both loud, which is just going to be ignored. And we're going to have a fall through here and everything is good now what can happen there is that we have anything else now we can have a new line the new line is also not valid so new line should uh, throw throw exception um, values can't be empty empty exclamation mark and then we have like the default case and the default case is uh, just gonna now append this one to the uh, the key with the section that's clear the key is cleared now we need to clear the value and we need to assign it to the value because now it's the first real character and then the state is gonna be equal to state uh, key value and then everything is good we break yeah, did I actually clear the the KV key in the ready for data? I think yes. Uh, current key clear. Yeah, that's all good. Did I on the section? Did I have done this on the section actually? I think on the section I have forgotten that ready for data. If we are going into the section, we need to make sure that we have the current section and clear this as well to make sure that they are empty as well. We have a new section provided. Okay. So now the only thing left to do is a KV value. The KV value is really simple. Simple. Um, actually, everything is allowed, right? If uh, C equals new line, the only thing that can really screw up uh, screw us up now is the come on the new line. Or oh, it's not screwing us up, but it's like terminating this. And everything else is really just to to the uh, plus equal added there. And now this is actually here where we are done. Now it's important that we um, have a way to actually parse this. Now we had the SUX and the DOM APIs. Um, we're going to implement SUX here as well. We're going to implement SUX by providing a virtual, virtual method here. And then we are going to provide several parsers here. So what I want to do here is I uh, do want to provide a virtual uh, void parse kv pair which is going to be called as soon as the kv pair is parsed which is going to get a const std uh, actually we can do this as a const std string reference because they are already strings and string reference are a bit stronger than the string view a string reference is a bit more meaningful it's going to be the section const std string reference section key and let's copy this over uh, value and let's actually make this one a pure virtual function so that we um, need to kind of like write an implementation for that so that this one is usable. Now we have this parse kv pair that's very simple and should do the trick. Now we can call this one here we can just say parse kv pair m uh, current section m current key M current value and this is one the, then the like pass to the, the actual implementation now you can see that we should not be able to create a parser here again what we could do is we could create like a class my parser and my parser is going to be an INI uh, PP uh, parser and if you do it like that you can like create a a my parser and what you would need to do is you would need to implement this virtual method here so uh, void parse uh, kv pair sadly intellisense is not able to automatically copy this over and let me actually steal this one like in a second or the only thing that i want to do is i want to do like a stdc out section yeah this stdc out doesn't work if you don't have the signature right um, so let's copy the signature over here and let's pass it in here and we have like the section then we have the key it's like the key and then we have the value which is the value and then we're going to do some std end line here and just going to print this one there and then you have like this new my parser and why is add file now not a thing uh yeah because this needs to be a public ini parser so that we have access to the features now we have created our own parser with our own implementation for parsing and i hope if everything gone well
Okay, attribute fall through cannot be applied in that context. Why can't it be? Because I have forgotten the um the semicolon? Probably. Yeah. And now let's see if everything works. Okay. So section owner key name John Doe. Okay. There was something wrong. Okay, there's something really wrong with our parser. It's probably not that wrong, but I do want to see what's happening here. It's printing the John Doe, and I think the John Doe is actually good. But it seems like that everything else is just appended, so we are not leaving the value, actually. Yeah, that's right, because if we are parsing this, we need to reset our state, right? So um, state equals state ready for data. We need to do it like that. If we don't do it, it doesn't work. So let's see if this is now giving us what we want. Okay, so section owner, uh, key is uh, name, value is John Doe, uh, owner organization is ACM Widgets Inc., database server is that one, port is that one, file is that one, so that looks good. So our parser is actually working, that is all good. Now the only thing that I want to do is I want to now actually implement um, not the my parser, I want to implement a few default parsers in our uh, library here. And we're going to do this by providing a own implementation for these classes. So well, I'm just going to um, collapse this down here. Maybe I do want to copy the function signature previously that I can uh, make this a bit easier. So what I want to have is I want to have a sex parser. And I do want to have a DOM parser that can do like stuff and they are going to be a public parser and a public parser. Now, um, both of them are going to need to implement this function here. Now they are not going to be virtual. They are going to be override and uh, they're going to be virtual here as well. And they're going to be public because they need to be accessible. Or did they, did I make them public? Actually, that's actually not how this might be done. Actually, this is like rather a private function because this shall not be called externally. Or might might it be called externally? I don't know. Maybe it is actually useful to call them externally uh, because then you can like inject uh, own key and value pairs in the parser if you like, like default values or something like that. So you could actually inject them. That's maybe a good idea. So now I need to implement, provide a few features for them. Let me copy this quickly over so that we have two implementations available here. And now we just need to implement how this works. Now uh, the sex parser needs a uh, function pointer. Now I don't like function pointers. I like SCD functional. So functional is a nice little header that gives us some amazing features that I'm going to show you in a second. Now the, do, uh, the sex parser shall use this SCD function stuff. Uh, but before we can do this, we uh, of course need to kind of like store this. Now uh, C++ provides a better way of function pointers actually um, in the form of an SCD function. So SCD function is actually a function pointer um, of a certain type. And I'm just going to call this one here simply my uh, callback. Now uh, the SCD function function provides uh, or requires a template argument. What is a template argument? Um, the template argument is the signature of the function. And the signature of the function here, you can see it is void. const std string reference, const std string reference, const std string reference. So only really what you do is you're going to completely write how you would write a function, but inside here. If you do this, this is now a function pointer wrapped as a std function. And you can see that this one is quite long. So what I tend to do is I tend to uh, write a using callback equals to that. And if you do this with the using, you have defined this like as an own type or like a type def, and then you can use like this callback as a type. And what you then in general also want to do is you want to have like the sex parser. The sex parser now... Um, as a constructor should take this callback uh, callback here and then you could say like m uh, callback callback here and everything is good then you have like possibilities to do that now i do want to provide a default constructor because by default this callback is like a uh, null pointer um, and this actually works now the only thing that i need to do is need to implement this one uh, inside the c++ file i could also implement this outside of it but what i do want to check is i want to check if my callback is valid and if my callback is valid i'm just going to call this one it works like a function uh, pointer 
call this like a function point. It really is a function pointer, but this function pointer is a hell of a lot of more powerful than a real function pointer. And that's what I'm going to show to you in a second, why this is so powerful. SCD functions has one specific purpose, and the purpose is to be allowed to pass a member functions and normal free floating functions. What this means, I'm going to show this to you in just a second so that I can, I can see what's, what's going on here. Now, um, I'm no longer going to call this one my parser. I'm going to call this one sex parser or INIPP uh, sex parser parser. And what I do want to do is I want to provide this function pointer. Now, what you can do is uh, you could write a fluid floating function like parse. And this parse function is then like getting an SCD string reference. I'm just going to now, because I'm lazy, I'm going to say like section key and value. And if you provide something like that, let's like SCDC out this quickly. I'm not gonna bother, like I'm just gonna say now double points um key equals uh value, something like that. SCD handle could do this like that, and what you can do is you can just put in parse here and everything you can see works. It just works as a normal function pointer. If you do it like that, it shouldn't really change anything. It should compile. And you can see, yeah, owner double point name equals John Doe. It's a different format because I've changed it, but it's doing the same thing. However, what you can do, and this is now really, really um, powerful, you could now write your class, uh, my, fa uh, my fancy, uh, fancy settings provider and the purpose is that this class oh no i deleted too much the purpose of this class is now to encapsulate the parser the storage of the actual objects that are going to come out of the parser at some point and just hold a bit more than just the parser itself so this is kind of like the idea here and this parser has like a void kickoff and this void kickoff function is meant to kick off the parsing, which should be public actually if you want to kick this off uh, from outside of that. And the kickoff maybe has a const std uh, file system path reference of uh, config file, something like that. And this config file is by default equal to config.ini. And what this one is doing, it is going to create a, a sex parser. And this parser is then going to get the, the call to the add file function. And uh, now I'm just going to replace everything in here. And the config file is going to be put it in here. However, what I want to do, since I do want to store the parsing inside of here, I have like this on um, kv pair function that should be called if we have a, a key and value pair. I do going to copy the signature from there and the pass is going to go because we do not uh, need this one here. So we have that on kv pair and this one is going to be removed here. And this is one is going to output this. However, it's not going to output this to that one. Actually, what we do have is we're going to have a private um, std o stream reference called os or myos, which is like the outstream to which we want to write that, which we going to write here as well. And what we're going to have is we're going to have a constructor that takes a std o stream reference os. And this is one that's then going to be stored in the my OS here so that we can kind of like specify where we're going to do this, right? This is still a placeholder. Normally your fancy settings provider would do more. However, you could now see that if I would try to add this on KV pair, it doesn't work because uh, the KV pair function is... Um, uh, is actually uh, a member function. If it's a member function, it always needs an instance to operate on, but function pointers can do this. But actually, std function can do this. There is a uh, std bind. std bind is a uh, call that is meant to bind a uh, function to an instance. Now, one really important thing is you need to always provide the class name, then the function name, and the reference to that, which means actually that I'm going to make a new line, so this is going to be a bit more simpler. Then it's uh, requiring you to provide an instance, and you, it's also requiring you to um, add in the actual arguments that you want to use. Now, these are not normal arguments. These are std placeholder. STD placeholder is a namespace that has many, many members, starting with this std placeholder underscore one. 
going over SD placeholder number two and number three. And the only thing that you really need to care about is that you place as many placeholders as arguments that you have. It is like that. I can tell you really why this is the case, why you need to put in these placeholders. It has something to do on how this std function, std bind works together to bind this instance to that function call. But really what you have done is you kind of like created um, a, a dispatcher for that function pointer. It is kind of like creating a dispatcher for that, um, which is then calling this properly in the pointer while your code and the actual INIPP, your code here, it doesn't care what this is. It just is an SCD function. And what we use is we are using SCD bind with like the function that we want to bind, the instance and placeholders to kind of like um, tell a language that we want to bind that certain instance now for that one single SCD function with that instance with these placeholders. And these placeholders are, again, just placeholders just to indicate three arguments. Um, I think it's actually required because on KV pair, you could have multiple implementations of on KVP pair with uh, smaller arguments. And then it would not be kind of like sure which to bind. This is why you need like these placeholders from like underscore one, two, three. Really doesn't matter, I think, which you use, but you should use them in order to just to be 100% safe. And if you do this like that, the idea is that we should get like the same output if we actually use it actually so yeah let's create one here sp for the settings provider out of scdc out and if we provide that one and call the kickoff function the idea would be that we are getting the same output do we get it we get it the same output but more code <laughs> again i'm just showing you how you can do things but the power is really that this is allow universal there's a thing called string stream i don't know have we talked about string streams um ss stream uh, or s stream not ss stream s stream is the header and instead of the s stream there's an std string stream the std string stream which people tend to call ss is an o stream which i could for example, put in here, and if I would now make a breakpoint, you would see that we're not going to get any output in the console uh, because the string stream is kind of like an in-memory buffer. You can see that we don't get anything on a console. However, this string stream in here has a string buffer, and the string buffer is kind of like containing our data. If you would want to get this one out, you can do an SDC out of the SS string, which allows you to access the actual string data out of that, which again, more code, but uh, same result would give us all of the data output it in here however this is like a, like a proper string and what you could do is you could write this to a file for example so what you could do is something like um std uh, uh o stream os which is something like dot slash my file dot ini uh no off stream is what i want to use and it's also not OS, it's off. And what I could do is I could put that one into the uh, off stream because this is a stream, it works similar. You can actually put, if, especially if you're writing to a string, you can put data in like that, like we have done this previously. Also an in string, you can also use the brackets the other way around to read from the string. But the idea here would that I should get like a myfile.ini if I run this which has like the content of the past INI, uh, right? If I would go in here and refresh that, we have now this myfile.ini, which is not an INI file. I should have called this .txt. And now we have like the, the output of the, um, of the application, which we had previously in the console. And this is now just with the power of writing classes and doing madness there, which, yeah, is uh, giving us... <laughs> A bit of things here. And actually, I think uh, I'm going to split these ones. We don't need to overdo this today. I am going to commit this as is so that you also have multiple versions. And I think we're going to do the DOM API in the next thing. So it's similar to the C implementation. Hey, one video for the sex API, but now it's really sexy. Ha 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 ha. Um, good joke. And um, yeah, we're going to do the DOM one in the next video. So yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.